be careful what you give your thoughts and energy to. When a number of people gather around an idea or belief, their thoughts and desires create a living entity. It is a law of the spirit world, and it exists even if this entity is not made up of enough material particles to be seen and touched. This collective entity is called egregor. Therefore, an egregor is a living, active entity, and every country, every religion, and every current of thought contains an egregor. Although an egregor is not a religious embodiment, it should not be surprising that it is often associated with such institutions. Robert Ambelaine explained in his book Practical Kabbalah, We call egregor a force generated by a strong spiritual current, which is later fed at regular intervals. In modern-day language, Vadim Zeland refers to this as pendulums, energy vortexes that swing back and forth depending on how much energy and focus their followers give it. L. S. Bernstein gave us the much more prosaic term of the form of a group. Therefore, an egregor is created by humans, not God or deities, although a common belief in some cultures is that other entities can help us generate it. Let's not be deceived by the term spiritual in Ambulane's definition. He uses it in opposition to physical. It is not a physical creature, no living, independent organism, but rather an artificial entity. A common idea and belief create egregor, and as such, it must be fed continually, so it does not disappear. Ambulane gives an extremely clear example when he speaks of the body of Christ, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the mystical church. They are an egregor, and these dogmas are used to describe the heart of the great spiritual current of Catholicism. Even Protestantism, Islam, Buddhism, and Freemasonry have egregors. A perfect example of an egregor in Catholicism is the mention of the devil and demons. That is pure fiction, such creatures do not truly exist but our imagination and beliefs give power to the birth of such entities in the spiritual world. The true definition of the devil or Satan is our uncontrolled imagination. Meaning, it makes us weak if we believe the power of our illusion that we are not worthy or deserving. We only sin against ourselves when we start believing such thoughts. The Bible is externalized, meaning we have been taught to seek God and Christ outside of us instead of within. God resides within us. God is unconditional love, and Christ is a higher state of consciousness. The main political ideologies also tend to create an egregor. Let's take aliens, for example. They also do not exist. It's a psychological operation that started in the 1940s and has been implemented in people's minds through science fiction movies up to this day. You probably think this is a load of nonsense and I know you're having a hard time believing this. It's called cognitive dissonance, a mental conflict that happens when beliefs don't align with actions. It's an uncomfortable state of mind when someone has contradictory values, attitudes, or perspectives about the same thing as you. Please don't disregard this video, as my goal is not to attack or offend anyone's beliefs and opinions. I am merely stating mine. I wouldn't be telling you this if I hadn't done extensive research. The great psychologist Jung proposed the idea of the collective unconscious. The egregor is, to some capacity, a parallel concept as it suggests an unconscious connection of minds to a greater whole. However, the collective unconscious is a passive process, while the creation of an egregor requires positive action. From this, we can conclude that an egregor is a passive creation that can be both good and evil. This is somewhat relevant to Jung's idea of archetypes, although the term archetype has also expanded its meaning over time, reaching almost all the meanings we want to give it. All the great religions and the great political or philosophical movements were initiated by skillful leaders who were often followed by those incapable of leading. However, this is less important because once the ruler has been formed and his image has been created, he requires much less effort to sustain himself than he must do. When we look at pictures of St. Peter's Square in the Vatican full of believers, the party in Times Square on New Year's Eve, or any other parade or event, we can see how great the power of thought so many people manifest. 
Hitler used the knowledge of hermetic principles for an evil, negative purpose, and he was one of the few people who, unfortunately, created such a powerful egregor by manipulating German citizens. That egregor still exists, and people feed it unconsciously. You see, an egregor doesn't require large crowds nor extraordinary emotional efforts to be created. Focusing is more important than a general emotion-laden atmosphere, and a few people who focus properly are just as effective as the restless manifestations of a hysterical crowd. The egregor of initiation societies is so powerful because not a drop of energy is lost. Once created, an egregor must be fed to survive. The energy required for this is much less than that required for its establishment. But in any case, egregor must be fed from time to time to sustain itself. Be it religious services, military parades, or popular gatherings, the meetings of those who generated this entity are important. A handful of people usually lead these establishments because maintaining an egregor always requires an inner circle to focus and direct the energy to achieve the desired goal. The inner circle may not necessarily understand the true nature of what it does. However, this is usually the case in insider groups. These establishments instinctively ensure the production of the necessary energy. The most powerful way to produce energy is by performing a ritual. A regularly repeated ritual maintains the egregor in all religions and nations alike. When communist Russia rose to power, relinquished its monarchy, and turned its back on the Orthodox Church, it was propelled to hold military parades and large popular gatherings, equally full of pomp and rituals, to feed the newly formed egregor. As long as people believe, the ruler will exist. With time, a mature egregor can become a somewhat independent existence. When this happens, the consequences can be tragic. When the visionary leader of a movement dies or is killed, and others take over the movement, its original ideas are often compromised or sometimes entirely changed. Then we say that those who took over the organization's leadership led it to meet its own petty goals, driven by malice and greed. And here is an important question we need to consider. Couldn't the egregor itself lead these people astray? The most effective way to quickly destroy an egregor is to use fire. If someone can destroy an egregor permanently, it will disappear immediately. In ancient Egypt, a cult was eliminated by erasing any trace of it, as was the case with the demolition of the monuments of Pharaoh Akhenaten in the city of Al Amarna. However, the Romans did not know that throwing fire alone destroys an egregor, while the blood sacrifice strengthened it. It is a lesson known in most religions. When the Romans shed the blood of the Christian martyrs, the end effect strengthened their egregor, which ensured their victory. Let us not overlook the fact that Christianity destroyed the temples of the gods of antiquity or transformed them into churches. At the same time, the Inquisition was well acquainted with these things, for it burned the so-called heretics and books along with their prayer. It was done in order to be sure of the complete disappearance of heresy. In fact, what the Inquisition claimed was heresy was actually the knowledge of the truth. And this happened many times throughout history, and it is still happening today. We find echoes of such thinking in the burning of the Library of Alexandria, which modern historians believe has held all the ancient knowledge and wisdom. Once humankind regained this forgotten knowledge over centuries, World War I happened with the deliberate purpose of destroying this knowledge and enslaving humanity into an industrial way of life. Then, there's Kristallnacht or the Night of Broken Mirrors. On November 9, 1938, synagogues throughout Germany and Austria were destroyed, and the so-called evocative works were set on fire. Egregor is a battery, and we are its cells. When we enter an initiatory order, a religion, a political party, or habitually participate in church services, we become bound to its egregor. We become the cells that materialize it. The same principle is applied to political parties. Even atheists who don't attend such services feed the egregor of corporate chains by unconsciously wearing symbols and brands that nurture the egregor. It is a storehouse of energy, and we give our energy to egregor. In return, we get a sense of belonging from this egregor, 
Thus, the member becomes isolated from the real world. And with the sum of the previously received collective powers, Egregor gives power and strength to the person when he needs it if he knows how to benefit from it. That's why we feel perfect harmony with the other members of our belonging societies. This pseudo sense of belonging comes from emotional wounds we were inflicted in our life, and we resonate with those who feel the same and together follow an egregor. The symbols we are surrounded with carry a charge, thus becoming the way to connect to the energy source of the individual egregor. It gives us back a fraction of our energy and feeds us our spiritual state. This is why any of the symbols of religion, movement, corporation, or political party are so important. The egregor is the central point of the projection and a source of energy, and we form the circle that surrounds it. Egregor is the spiritual temple that everyone builds from, and in turn, egregor feeds on their energy. Not giving any thought or energy weakens the egregor, and eventually, it will subside. It may sound like a paradox, Yet fully ignoring the politics, the media, and the negative news weakens their egregor, and they lose the power and hypnotic trance over the population. Whether we believe or not what they say, it doesn't matter because we focus on their actions, which strengthens the egregor. By not focusing on it, the energy won't flow into entities we don't want to manifest in our reality. We can't get rid of evil if we think about it. Energy flows where attention goes. Let's focus on the positive and nurture the positive if we want love, joy, and happiness in the world. I recommend watching Vadim Zelen's videos on transurfing reality. It's good stuff. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, be sure to subscribe.